hopped on that copter, you came home, you did some acid. No, actually what happened, when I came home, see, when I went to Vietnam, all right, you gotta remember, that was like, well, when I went into the military, it was like 1965. Girls were still wearing dresses below the knee. I mean, you know, you didn't, they were like, you know, whatever the fuck they were supposed to be. They still try and be that way, but that don't work either. But when we came home, you know, they took us by chopper. They brought us to our base camp, and our base camp at the time was in a place called Bien Hoa, which was like 40 miles north of Saigon. And packed all your shit together, and they took you by a deuce and a half, this truck, over to Tansanut, and you got on an airplane to go home. I don't know if you remember Braniff Airlines. All right. Braniff was flying troops home from Vietnam. And they were also, a, you know, a continental carrier. But the, wait, the, the waitresses, the stewardesses had these mini skirts and they were all stars. I mean, that's what Braniff prided themselves on. Now, here you go, you get in this plane and you haven't seen a round-eyed girl in a long time. And now, you never saw a miniskirt, all right? So now you get on this plane and you go, what the fuck is happening here? Like, are they hookers? <laughs> I mean, you, don't, you don't know what the hell's going on, all right? To make a long story short, I meet this one stewardess, Miss Garcia. Till today, I don't know her first name. But me and Miss Garcia, we, got, we landed at Kennedy. And we wound up in some hotel in Manhattan. So I didn't even go home the first night. <laughs> it was Miss Garcia, it was the first night. Second night, I got on Long Island Railroad and went out to Levittown, you know. And my mother said, I thought you were supposed to be home yesterday. I said, yeah, but you know, the plane got delayed. <laughs> you know, I gave it this bunch of bullshit, you know. Never forget Miss Garcia. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful. But I mean, we came home to a whole nother world. You know, I mean, we came home, and like I said, Joe Rico popped a hit of acid in my mouth the second night I was home, and we were out at this club with the Young Rascals. You were a house band at the time. It was called The Cave in the Hamptons. And I mean, here I am tripping, and three days earlier, I was still in the bush. You know, so, and that just led to, like I said, my relationship with Jack and more drugs and more drugs and more drugs and music and it was sex, drugs and rock and roll 60s style. Not this bullshit that these kids talk about today. I'm talking about that was 60s style. Yeah. It, it, it was just a really, it was a whole strange world to come home to because it, 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 it totally changed. It wasn't what you left. You know, you know, so the five, like five, what, four years? You came back in 69, right? Mm -hmm. So you had in the, been in the military for four years. Two years in Vietnam mm -hmm. or three years? Two years? No, a little, a little over two, like two and a half. Did your perception of humanity change? I mean, do you, I mean, obviously- you're Well, of course, wise. combat's gonna do that. You know, I mean, I gave up, you know, religion and, you know, all of that. I mean, that just went out the window. The view of the world, and you know, one thing I never changed was my views on the war. You know, I mean, I, I was living in Berkeley, you know, California, which at the time was called Berserkly. You know, that's where all the riots were, Mario Savio, you know, when you talk about the social changes, Berkeley was the hotbed for that, you know. And me and my new wife moved out there and I had long hair and I was playing music and I was doing that, but my, my, my views on what was right and wrong never changed because I just didn't understand why, you know, the American people were, were actually against the American soldiers. It wasn't like it is today where they want to bring the soldiers home because there's soldiers dying in Iraq and blah, blah, blah. It was different. 
they were blaming the American soldiers for doing this and, you know, for me lie, things like that. Um, so my views to that never changed. So I was like, I was almost like the anti-hippie, you know. I looked like it. I had the ripped jeans. I had shit sewed on. Had hair down to here, you know, beard. Lived in Berkeley, but I was like the anti-hippie because I couldn't get into debates with those people because I'd get so violent that they would like leave. They'd run away, you know. Did you ever get violent with a hippie? Oh yeah. Plenty of times. LBJ, me and him came home together, all right? We never seen a hippie. We never seen one, all right? Our APO was San Francisco. We landed at San Francisco airport. At the time, you were allowed to bring home more souvenirs. So he's got an AK-47. Now, the barrel is concreted, all right? There's no firing pin in the shit. But I mean, other than that, it's an AK-47, all right? And we walk off the plane with all the fucking ribbons, and, you know, we're like just badass motherfuckers. And we get off the plane, and he's got the AK wrapped in newspaper with tape. I mean, that's how it was in 60, it was 60, first time I came on, it was 67. And here's this guy and this girl. I mean, San Francisco airport was all, you know, hippies. And it was like we walked into another world. And here's this guy sitting with one of these um, Civil War jackets on. You know, those blue things with all the... And he had the long gold hair and you know, beard. And we're walking and he looked at me and said, Stubby, he said, hold on a minute here. And this guy and this girl are sitting down waiting for a flight. And he just pulled that newspaper off that AK-47 and pointed it at this guy's forehead and just felt, General Custer, I heard about people like you. <laughs> you know? Because he was an Indian from North Carolina. And he said, fuck you gonna do to the Indians now? This kid, I thought this kid was just gonna flat out shit his pants. I mean, I don't know if he did or he didn't. But he would, and I had to just grab Lonnie. I said, you know, the police are going to come here. And his attitude was, fuck the police, fuck everybody. Who are these people? These ain't Americans, you know. Because like I said, the world we came home to had changed. Because if you look at history, and you look at what happened between 1965 and 1967, the world changed. I mean, women were walking around with their titties hanging out. When we left... They had shit like, I mean, they put napkins in here if there was any kind of cleavage, so you couldn't see the cleavage, you know. And here we came home and they were burning bras and shit, you know. So it was an interesting return. Mm -hmm.